Welcome to the Hockey Riders Flames Faceoff, a weekly show with our top Calgary Flames writing crew, bringing you the latest news, rumors, trades, player grades, game results, and much more. From training camp to the playoffs, from draft day to the trade deadline, our team covers everything that happens with the flaming seat. So get set, get focused. It's time for the Flames Face Off. Flames Face Off. Flames Face Off. Hello, everybody. I'm Paul Quinney, and this is the Flames Face Off brought to you by the Hockey Writers. Now, this week's show is being brought to you by the Morning Skate, and that is a daily newsletter uh, delivered right to your inbox Monday to Friday. And uh, it's just jam-packed with the best hockey stuff on the planet. I subscribe to it. I love it. Recommend you subscribe to it, too. It's just a daily dose of latest NHL news and uh, rumors, histories, funnies, quizzes. Uh, just a little hockey fun uh, and information brought to you every day of the week by the hockey writers. Now, to get it, you have to subscribe. So just Google uh, the Morning Skate Hockey Writers and get yourself signed up for that newsletter. So with that, I'd like to introduce the panel. We have with us a full slate of the Calgary Flames writing crew, uh, Colton Pankew, Greg Tazowski, and Brett Krause. Welcome, gentlemen. I hope you're feeling energetic and ready to go. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> want to start off with, let's start off with one good, one bad. I'll start. Uh, my good for the week is uh, Michael Backlund, who Saturday night played his well, actually, as of tonight, played his uh, 730th game in a Flaming Sea sweater. Uh, and that puts him fifth all time in Flames history for games played. Uh, now, out of interest, uh, you're probably wondering who the others were. That uh, They are Jerome McGinley, Mark Giordano, Robin Regeer. That goes back. And Al McKinnis even further. Uh, they're all ahead of Backlund, but Backlund, uh, he should pass McKinnis this year. And uh, the bad this week is me, none other than Paul Quinney. Um, last week, and the reason I'm bad is because last week I said uh, Adam Rzichka needed to develop a mean streak. Uh, well, 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 he proved me wrong. Uh, in Wednesday's game against the Anaheim Ducks, he, uh, he elbowed Kevin uh, Shattenkirk in the head and was fined $2,000 for the effort. I stand corrected. Adam, you're a real mean guy. Um, Colton, what do you got for us, a good and a bad? So for my good, I will give it to Brad Tree Living. I uh, really liked the trade. I know we'll get into that later. Uh, yep. Picking up Tyler Toffoli, I think so far he scored two goals already. He just looks like a great addition and has a couple more years on his deal too. Um, and bad right now, I, I was trying to come up with something. I really don't have anything. They're on a 10-game win streak right now. Like life is... Life is pretty good for Flames fans, so I really can't bring up anything right now. Hakuna Matata in Calgary. Um, Brett, what do you got for us, a good and a bad? Um, yeah, for I think my good this week um, has been kind of the, the team as a whole. Um, kind of looking at the games uh, like today uh, against Seattle, Vancouver, where – they were really, you know, weren't quite getting the finishes, you know, had lots of chances. Um, and, you know, a lot of seasons past, they they kind of blew those games. They, they'd kind of let the other team back into it and find a way to lose those games. Yeah. Um, and it kind of seems like this season the, the team's got it figured out. And, you know, they just kind of keep chipping away, keep grinding away, don't give up. And, you know, they, they came away with three of Okay. I got nothing this week. Nothing. Oh, everything's <laughs> coming up roses and uh, just Mr. Positivity, you and Colton there. That's Life's good over here. I guess maybe I'll give it to the Calgary weather is my bad for uh, coming back and uh, being minus 20 again here this week. Well, you can't have everything. Greg, what do you got? A good and a bad this week for us? Or maybe well, a good is. Well, my, my good is I've been lobbying for Dan Vladar to play, you know, for weeks and weeks. The guy's just, you know, I feel bad for this guy. He's just tucked away in the end of the bench in a ball cap. Like he's good. 
He finally got a start. And although he didn't like play like lights out, but he was solid and he got the win. And it was actually his first start in the saddle dome. Like we're already huh. well in the second half of the season. That was his first start in the saddle dome. That is nuts, but that's my good and my bad. I'm kind of with the guys. I can't really think of anything bad with the flames, but I can always pick on our neighbors to the north. My bad is Mike <laughs> Smith and their goaltending situation there. Like he let in four goals on seven shots. It wasn't really all his fault, but like, come on, you guys. And I heard somewhere that, that uh, Jacob Markstrom, you know, when he was free agent, <clears throat> Edmonton was one of the places he was considering. And I heard that Calgary just, you know, offered him more term. But if I was the Oilers, like, they haven't had a goalie. They're kind of like the Flames, haven't had a goalie in years. And if Markstrom wants six years, give him six years. You know, like, give him seven years. You know, they needed a goalie more than anybody in, in, the, in the division probably. And so my, my good, uh, Ladar, bad. Edmonton's goalie situation in general, I guess, is just bad. And it will be bad the rest of the year, I think. Well, sorry. You know, Calgarians can take comfort in the train wreck that is uh, that is Edmonton, I guess, this year, right? I mean, we enjoyed that. Come sure. on, there. They won five in a row, didn't they? Well, I, I tell you, I, was listening, I forget who it was uh, I was listening to who said, uh, you know, it, it'll be the general manager's, uh, he'll be fired if, uh, I mean, how do you not, how could you be in danger of not making the playoffs when you've got McDavid and Drysaddle on your team? But, uh, and, uh, it's crazy. Because you have Mike Smith on your team too. That's, that's the difference. That's uh, the problem. We, we lived through those years. <laughs> yeah, I remember Mike Smith. He was good and bad. He was good. He was good. And he was bad. He was really bad. Yeah. Very streaky. Very yeah. Oh, some this guy was calling for the owner to be fired. So uh, it's going to be uh, hell to pay in Edmonton if they don't make it. But uh, look, everything's coming up roses in Calgary, right? Uh, Valentine's Day uh, last Monday, uh, Mr. Cherliving delivered a gift to uh, Calgary fans. He picked up uh, Tyler Toffoli. And uh, I guess they they did. The Flames did what uh, we said they should do this panel and uh, in fact predicted they would do. So someone's listening to us. Uh, wanted to dive into that one. Um, first question is, is uh, was this a good deal for Brad for living in the Flames? Uh, you know, it cost him Tyler Pitlick. Uh, too bad to see him go. Good player. Emil Heineman and a first rounder. Uh, what are your thoughts, uh, Greg, on this trade? Well, I was, um, I was happy to see Pitlick unloaded because he was not doing anything this year. He was hurt, he was hurt or ineffective. So like he, he, he wasn't a bad player. He just, he just, he had nothing this year. So I'm really glad he's been pushed out of town and I'm really glad that the flames didn't lose any of the really top, you know, high end guys that everyone talks about, like, you know, like Dustin Wolf or, or mm. Pelche or, you know, Connor Zeri, all these guys, you know, all these high end, and, and they sent a guy who we didn't even, or they didn't even draft, you know, like he is a guy who came through the Sam Bennett trade. So he, he was a prospect that wasn't even, you know, one of our top guys. So like, I actually was actually looking at, um, on the internet to find someone who would say that Calgary didn't get a good deal or didn't do well, because as, as far as I can tell, like yeah. Colton said in his headline is it's a home run. Like it's, uh, there's no downside to this deal. Y yes, they lose a number one, but you know it was going to be kind of a late round pick probably anyway. So, you know, it's uh, it's nothing but nothing but good, good vibes and uh, nothing but two thumbs up from this guy. All right. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know, Brett. What 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 are you thinking there? It, it, I mean, it looked like. Uh, I mean, what the hell was Montreal thinking? It looks like they they really got a, a the short end of the stick on this one. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of seems that way. I'm, I mean, I'm not sure kind of what the philosophy is there with the, you know, kind of the overhaul going on in Montreal, but, um, like, I kind of think this trade would have made more sense had, uh, to fully been a rental, but he's signed for two more years. So, I mean, really to give up, you know, basically a first round pick and a, a prospect who, I've kind of read that there are a lot of scouts, you know, see he's probably got middle six potential. So not a superstar, not a guarantee that he'd be, you know, even playing for the flames in three, four years. So uh, yeah, I think they, you know, flames really got a good deal here. And um, you know, when um, Elliot Friedman there said that the trade was coming down the pipe, 
you know, I immediately thought it was going to be a first round pick and one of Jacob Pelche or Connor Zary because, you know, it, that's kind of the way it looks like Montreal is going to be going is loading up on prospects and draft picks. But um, yeah, the fact that they didn't give up a, a grade A prospect, which, you know, I think they should keep around for now. Um, and just a first round pick, essentially, Tyler Pitlick just kind of made the money work. So this was, yeah, home run, slam dunk, whatever you want to call it. It's because uh, that's that's a, a right shot, right wing is something that has the Flames have needed yeah. for many seasons. So this is a, a huge get for them. Yeah. I don't know, Colton, you know, cynic that you are, a cynical writer that you are, dude, uh, say something bad about the Toffoli trade. Is it possible? <laughs> I from a Canadian's perspective, I think it is. I like you had kind of alluded to. I think uh, the fact that like he still has two years left after the season at a really good price tag is like I like Brett didn't even said too. I thought they could have got more. It seemed more like a rental type trade. Um, but yeah, from the Flames' perspective, like they kind of we talked about needed to add scoring aside from like the Goudreaux, Lindholm's all that, and they did that in a big way. Like he's a huge player, and I think he'll be really big for them down the stretch. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I heard uh, Sherratt was part of the trade, but uh, fell through at the last minute. And uh, a lot of pundits in Calgary are saying that's actually a good thing. Uh, they didn't hold Sherratt in too high esteem. Um, so tell me then, guys, uh, who is he going to play with? Uh, he's been playing, the, from what I've seen, on third line with Monahan and Dubé. Will he stay there? Uh, is there a role for him on the power play? He hasn't seen much action there. Greg, your thoughts? Uh, how are they going to use him? Well, if the Flames are lucky, he'll make a third line go. You know, like I think it, I think I, I was writing last week that um, that uh, he, he's kind of like a guy like him is kind of like a missing piece that might be needed to get over the playoff hump because a lot of these successful playoff teams that go deep, like a third round you know, and, or into the finals, they all have, they have three lines that can score and the flames really only have, you know, one line that scores. And now the second line is heating up now, but really after that, it really drops off. So if he can make a third line go and make Monaghan and Dubé go, and you know what, since, since he's arrived, like Monaghan and Dubé combined for five points in the first two games and, um, and Monaghan scored all on the power play today, but um, I think he's going to, make everyone around him better. I think he's going to really be the engine of a third line. And if they keep on the third line without moving him up, you know, if they can make three, three go, then I think the flames are golden for the yeah. playoffs. No, that you raise a good point there. That is the hope that he can uh, find that magic that they had. Uh, he and Monahan had, had had with the Ottawa 67s and I don't know, years and years ago, but so uh, we'll see. Brett, uh, you're thinking, uh, is that his home uh, third line? Will we see him on other lines or in different situations? Um, yeah, I think that's, for me, the kind of the way it sort of shakes out. I mean, that first line, you're you're not going to mess with that. That It's one of the best lines in the entire league. Probably and uh, the backline line has been, you know, pretty consistent through most of the year, but uh, kind of those last stretch of games have been, like, incredibly dominant. So... Again, another line that you're probably not going to break up. So kind of then he slots in on that third line, I think, with Monaghan. And hopefully that's, you know, give them a few more games here and they can start sort of getting a feel for each other and uh, getting some chemistry. And hopefully that can get that third line going. So on a, you know, a night when you're not getting scoring from the Goudreau line, then, you know, maybe you can start counting on that line as well to bring some offense. So, uh yeah, I think right now that that third line is just kind of the perfect fit for him right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, Sutter has a reputation for juggling lines and doing all kinds of, you know, combinations and recombinations. Uh, Colton, what are your what are your thoughts there? How is he going to use his shiny new toy in uh, Tyler Toffoli? Uh, well, I think for right now, it's kind of like the don't fix what isn't broken type situation just with this win streak they're on. But I do think like if scoring kind of dries up or whatever, if they go through a rough stretch and I wouldn't be surprised to see them kind of move things around. Like Brett said, I think that top line is pretty much cemented for the rest of the season, but maybe he gets some looks on that second line. Um, but for right now, I think he's, he seems to be meshing well with Monaghan and I think uh, there's no point to switch it right now. Yeah. Well, let's switch gears here. I mean, uh, you raise a good point there, Colton. You don't 
uh, try to fix what ain't broken here. Uh, and the Flames ain't broken. They're sitting at a record of 30, 13, and 6, 10-game uh, uh, winning streak. Uh, that's, I think, the longest in the league right now. It's a franchise record. I mean, I can go on and on. We all could with superlatives on the Flames. So let's get to the question everybody's wondering in Calgary. Is this the year the Calgary Flames win the Stanley Cup? Greg, what are you thinking? Give us your prediction. Uh, is it possible with this team? Oh, I think it's very possible with this team, just based on how they're playing right now. Like, um, like everything's working and even things that aren't working great, it doesn't, they're not a big issue. You know, like uh, if you're not getting much from your fourth line, it doesn't matter as long as you're not getting scored against them. They've really had, they really kept the goals against down against everybody recently. So, and the, the games have been tighter. The offense has been drying up a bit in the last few games, but, but their, their overall game is so solid right now. Like uh, I, I don't want to know if I'm going to give you odds exactly what will they, will they voice the Stanley Cup, but, I think this is the year that they get out of the first round and they get out of the second round. I think it's a, it's conference final, you know, probably against, you know, probably Colorado at this point. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, and I think Daryl Sutter can work at his magic. When he came last year, he said, I have unfinished business. And I kind of like scoffed at that. Like, it was like, well, you, you really need to get this group, you know, to win the Stanley cup. And, and they didn't do very well in the second half of the season when he took over. It was a 500 team, and I thought, well, maybe maybe Daryl can't work his magic anymore. Maybe he's too old. Maybe he's too maybe he's too gruff. Maybe he's too too angry. Maybe he's just all the above. But somehow he's pulled it off. So like, um, he he's made a believer out of me. Like I I wasn't sure about the signing or, or about the the contract of bringing him on, but I think uh, he deserves a lot of credit in this. And I'm saying third round or bust, and and possibly Stanley Cup final. All right. Brett, what are you saying? I mean, should I be making plans to come out there to Calgary so I can party on the Red Mile, uh, stay at your house, or? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's definitely an exciting time to be a Flames fan. I think we're we're gonna have some good times on the Red Mile this spring for sure. Um, I think they can get out of the Pacific Division, so I, you know, I think they can win two rounds if. If everything goes right, I mean, everybody knows the playoffs are a crapshoot. We watched, you know, the Tampa Bay, um, you know, one of the best teams in the regular season a couple years ago, lose four straight to Columbus, you know, so picked a bad time to go on a, a losing streak. So it's, you know, it's never a guarantee, but kind of after watching this win streak and just how good they've been, um, I'm not going to say... I don't think Stanley Cup, but I, I think they're definitely going to, you know, contend to be there at the third round for sure. Okay. This is the Flames Faceoff. And don't forget to sign up for the Hockey Writers Morning Skate at morningskate.io so you don't miss the best daily hockey newsletter on the planet, newsletter on the planet, if I do say so myself. Uh, it's delivered every weekday, 8 a.m. sharp, to your inbox, Monday through Friday. And uh, be the first to know what's happening in the hockey world. You'll be the most knowledgeable guy or gal at the water cooler. Um, Colton, what are you thinking here? I want to get a prediction from you. Is this the year the, the uh, Flames win the Cup? Uh, I mean, I think, like, every, you know, the, the big thing is just getting in. And then we've seen in the past, like, anything can happen. I think the most important thing for winning a cup is having a really good goalie and they have one of the best in the league this season, if not the best. Um, there's some really good teams in like the West, like they still have like Vegas, if they're fully healthy, that lost that roster with Eichel now too is, is loaded. And then you got Colorado. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it definitely won't be easy. And I think to not to bash on him, he's having a great season or anything, but I think there has been stuff with Goudreau in the playoffs where his plays kind of seemed to tail off. So, you have to wait and see how that goes. But I think with this Toffoli edition and just how they are playing, I really do think they have a good shot. Like I think Greg saying Western Conference Finals, I, I don't think that's a long shot at all. And I think that's kind of what is expected of them now, especially you have some uncertainties next year with Goudreau and Kachuk's contracts still not being signed. So I think this is the year that they really do need to go for it. And I, I think they'll for sure get out of the first round. Second 
we'll see. Like I, it's like I said, the Vegas is tough, but I, I think they have a good shot. All right. All right. Um, well, you know, if, if it is, if this is the year that, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying, look, this is the year they've got to do it. It's Calgary's year. So go for broke. Uh, if that is the case, then should true living be adding more talent, you know, full marks for Toffoli, but does he need to bring in more, even if that means mortgaging the future by dealing picks and prospects, uh, Greg, what what's you think? What are you thinking here? Does he lay it out all on the line here and uh, try to beef up the the lineup even further? And if so, would it be a forward or a defenseman? Well, that's a that's a good question because you know I'm 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 kind of pretty impressed with how they're making these three pairings work, and I've been I think we've been critical on and off of that third pairing all season because like sometimes they seem okay, and then other times, you know. Zadorov looks like a big moose out there who can't move and like he gets stuck and he, then he's out of position. And so I can't really, if, if they, they could add like a depth defenseman and I, I don't think that would cost them that much as kind of insurance, but I don't really know if they, they really need like another puck moving offensive style defenseman because, you know, their, their top four is pretty good. You know, like with Shillington having a breakout year and, you know, every, I read every defenseman in Calgary is on pace for a career year offensively, right. like even, even good Branson, you know, who <laughs> scores like two goals a year. So it's like, yeah. it's working, you know, it's kind of working right now. And so I'm, I'm kind of afraid to, uh, to kind of uh, upset the apple cart or whatever, because it seems to be, you know, a lineup that's winning. And so I'm, I'm not sure why you would, you know, there's a long way to go yet. There's still like over 30 games to go or whatever it is, you know, so it's a, uh, Something could happen, but I'm I'm at at kind of the point right now where I'm thinking, well, let's just see how these guys do in the next ten games and uh, see how they can if they stay this hot. There's really no need to to add more depth at this point. Yeah, Brett, what what are you thinking on that? Uh, does he does he you know let her let her rip here and try and get more talent? Uh, if you know, um, yeah, that's you know now with the Toffoli trade, there's there's not much cap space left, so you know, you're, you're going to have to be moving somebody else out uh, in order to make an addition. And, you know, I'm not really sure who you would move out at, the, at this point. Um, and I, I've kind of, you know, sort of thought that maybe they can kind of somehow exchange their sort of, their non, not non roster, but their, their press box guys, you know, like Brett Ritchie, Brad Richardson and uh, Michael Stone on the back. Uh, Michael Stone hasn't played, I think he's played one game this season. So that, you know, if there's an injury, I'm not sure that's a guy you want to have coming in come playoff time. Um, and you know, Richie and Richardson haven't really been able to do much when they've got into games this season. So, uh, I'm kind of looking at it as, can you bring in somebody that maybe just Trevor Lewis out? And then Lewis is kind of your guy who's a little bit better than, Richardson and Richie, um, but yeah, it's going to be tough to make any sort of splash. So I think if, if anything, uh, I would assume it's a depth defenseman because we all know that, you know, Trey living loves that at the deadline and they've been rumored to be on in on a bunch of guys. So that's kind of where I see it going. Yeah. What do you think Colton? Uh, who, who do they uh, make a, adding more talent a priority and uh, are we going to see some big moves who would it be fen defenseman or forward i think as far as big moves go i think that the foley one is their their big one i think the third pairing i think scares me a bit come the playoffs just with how fast paced everything is i think that can maybe get them in trouble so i think adding like a insurance defenseman who can kind of come in and out of the lineup for those guys maybe a bit quicker um whether it's on the left or the right side i think would be something that they might look into, but just with the limited cap space and everything, it's, it's tough. So I don't think there will be any more big splashes from them. Okay. Well, uh, let's, you know, in, in uh, big splashes, I wanted to get to the shootout round here, uh, start off with the Foley. Uh, you know, is, is, is he the biggest trade that, that Tre Living's ever done? And do you think Calgary Flames fans will stop calling for his head? Uh, <laughs> The, uh, there's a rich tradition of that in Calgary. Uh, what are you thinking, Greg? Is this the biggest trade he's ever done? Uh, well, this is the biggest in-season trade by a long shot. You know, he, he just doesn't, he, he's told people, you know, 
the media all the time is like, oh, I don't do rentals. I don't, you know, he, I don't like doing rentals. He, he said that in interviews over and over again. So like, yeah, this is, I can't really think of an in-season trade that was big since I think when they got Mike Camilleri, you know, like years ago in mid-season, like that was the last time, but I, he was the GM back then, I don't think. But the, but so, yeah, it's been a long time since the, the Flames have done something like this in-season. So um, it doesn't save his job. I think if, if we, if the flames get to the third round, I think absolutely it does. You know, like if it's, if, if he adds to Foley and is this team's really great and, and then they, then they crumble again, like they did against the Colorado avalanche three years ago, where they lost in five games after being the number one team in the Western conference, like, like the flames, you know, flames fans really were mad about that. I was mad about that. You know, I, everyone was mad, you know, like it's, yeah, I wanted to, true living head on a platter too because you have you have to blame somebody when your whole team kind of just crumbles like that and so yeah i think if, if the flames have success in the playoffs that kind of cures everything and that kind of smooths smooths everything over and i think that's that's the key for brad true living to to keep keep on sailing here in calgary yeah what 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 are you what are you thinking uh brad on as to fully trade is it his biggest and best uh what, save his job if they don't go as far as everybody thinks they they're going to go this year. Um, yeah, I'm you know kind of with Greg. Definitely one of the biggest in season trades in you know recent memory for the Flames. Um, I would still probably rank his his trades for you know the Lindholm Hannafin package and for Dougie Hamilton way back. Um, probably over top of those two, or over top of the Toffoli trades, but. Um, yeah, this is definitely one that you know where you could sit back and uh, like this one gets you over the hump into the in the playoffs. Um, you know, he's an impact forward, uh, yeah. which is what they needed. You know, it wasn't a fourth line guy, it wasn't a third pair, it wasn't an Oscar Fantenberg or a Derek Forbort. It was you know, it was it's a guy who's a proven scorer who's been there, done that. You know, it, it was just it made perfect sense for the Flames to go after him. So. Uh, yeah, it's definitely definitely one of the biggest ones in his his career as Flames GM, though. Yeah, well, I heard him uh, interviewed uh, last week, I guess, and uh, he patted himself on the back and he said, "You know, it was time the general manager did his job, and by God, yeah, I did it." So, what, what, what are you thinking, uh, Colton? Has he has he done his job? Is this uh, the biggest trade he's done, or where's it rate in your view, looking back on his trading history? I think because of the time that it happened right now, just with the team being as playing as well as they are, and it looks like they have a chance to win the division here. I, I do, I would say it's the biggest one he's made. And I think um, in terms of like him, the people getting off him, I do think, yeah, you've seen like just on t- social media and everything, it seems like fans are praising him again. So we'll see how long that lasts. But uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a huge trade for them. And I think, yeah, I, like I, this offseason, I think there will be, again, some serious questions and like revolving uh, tree living in terms of what he's able to do with Goudreau, Kachuk. But for right now, I think uh, he took a lot of the pressure off himself. Mm. All right. We're going to see. Um, wanted to, let's talk about Mr. Sutter. Uh, is he a candidate for the Jack Adams Award as uh, Coach of the Year? Uh, Greg, what's your speculation? Yeah, I, you, you, I think if you just Google it, you know, Daryl Sutter, Jack Adams, a bunch of hits come up this year. Like it's, it's written about, you know, a fair bit by, by the hockey writers and by pretty much every hockey outlet that I can, that I can see, like he's, I think he has to be the front runner. Like he's uh, his, his, his roster is not that, not that different from, from yeah. last year when he took over. And so like, and you know, they, they, they Brad for living just, is known to do tinkering in the off season and, and that's all he really did. So, um, yeah, I think it has to be Daryl, Daryl Sutter, who, who has to get on, get most of the credit. I, I know that JJ Markstrom hasn't playing great, but like, it wasn't the moves like bringing in good Branson. That's, that wasn't it. That wasn't that. That's not the reason why they're on a 10 game heater right now. So I, yeah, I, I think Sutter will be the, one of the three finalists. And unless something crazy happens in this, in the right. last third of the season, then, yeah, I think he's he's the guy with the trophy. Brett, the case for Mr. Sutter is a Jack Adams Award winner. Or can you make it? Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to go out and say, you know, if it's not a unanimous vote for Daryl Sutter, then some of those writers with voting credentials, you know, haven't been paying attention this season. The um, Eastern writers. Yeah, those Eastern writers yeah. that we're always shaking. Remember those guys? Yeah. <laughs> those guys. Um, yeah, I think, the, you know, you look, at, you look around the league and in the last couple of seasons, and there's just no team that's really – made the turnaround like the flames did they just you know didn't really like Sutter said when he came in they had no identity that that first you know day he was there in the press conference and now they're you know they're they're getting sort of national news in Canada and they're you know NHL networks talking about the flames and I always always feel like the flames are kind of just kind of fly under the radar because they're never very good and they're never very bad so um yeah, just the the fact that he's turned this ship around, and you know, Goudreau, Kachuk, are having the seasons that they're having. You know, I think that's part of it. Bringing in Sutter, he, you know, he understands how those guys need to play and how to get them to play certain ways. So, uh, yeah, I think he's he's the slam dunk winner for the Jack Adams this year. All right, all right. I'm feeling confident. He's got two endorsements here, but uh, to seal the deal for me to go down and see my bookie and put some money down on this, I got to hear from Colton. So uh, where is he going to end up uh, winning it or three finalists? Or Yeah, I, I think for sure he wins it. I think it's an award that seems to be given to a team like that maybe didn't have really high expectations heading into the season. I know the Flames are kind of viewed by most as a bubble team. And right now they're starting to kind of widen the gap for the lead in the Pacific. So I think he's definitely the front runner. All right. We're going to be watching for that gentleman. Uh, but unfortunately we've run out of time, but it was a great discussion as usual. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And thank you everybody for joining us again this week for another edition of the Flames face off. But before you go, in case we haven't convinced you with our first two pitches, uh, two plugs for the morning skate, uh, you'll get, uh, if you sign up for it, you'll get to relive some of the West Macaulay's uh, most legendary moments as an NHL referee. you got to check out that out. He's hilarious. The morning skate, it's the kind of content that's going to put a smile on your face. So join us at morningskate.io and we will see you in seven days time. Take care.